you can hand, uh, hand over my microphone to Mr. Park. Thank you, thank you. Oh, nice. We got a nice crowd here. Well, happy afternoon, everyone. My name is Sebastian. I'm here with some awesome people. We're going to talk a bit about the future of gaming. Now, y'all may know that gaming has gone from you know, arcade consoles to mobile to Web3 to AI and all these new things are happening in this world. And these fine folks want to talk about some of the really cool impacts. And so I think really a good place to start is sort of the evolution of what at least I would consider one of the core Web3 game studio publishers in Sky Mavis. And so if you want to grab your microphone right there, I think it's on. Testing, yeah. There we go. So talk about publishing. Talk about what it looks like in 2023 to be you. Got it, yeah. So hi everyone, I'm Bailey. I cover the ecosystem at uh, Sky Mavis, mainly on Ronin blockchain. So I think the uh, important thing to say is, of course, um, Ronin becomes the winning ecosystem when we help games succeed. So right now, I think the understanding regarding how to build a Web3 game is still quite primitive. We have seen Axie Infinity done it. So our company, of course, created Axie Infinity. Now, with that learnings, we are trying to kind of generalize it, apply it to some of the partner studios that we have. So that's uh, actually what we are currently doing. And then this Web3 publisher involves things like solutions engineering, community building, and also, um, let's say, go-to-market strategy regarding the NFT launch and also the game launch, and also post-game launch, right? Thinking about UA, what does it look like in a Web2, Web3 setting? So that's what it looks like. Yeah, I mean, Bailey, that's actually a really good point. I think this is something that people in the audience will talk and wonder about, which is, like, how do you view publishing as differentiated in this current world, and, and especially with Sky Mavis versus you know, what we used to see with like, the Activision Blizzards of the world? Yeah, so I think uh, the very important thing to highlight is of course how we started with Axie Infinity. I think Axie wasn't started as a play to earn game specifically. When it started, it was like an NFT, people had fun breeding it, collecting the different parts of the Axies. And then over time, people got more and more involved with the breeding activity, things became profitable, people wanted to buy Axies, farm SLP. So I think the community building aspect is actually what's missing maybe right now in the Web2 world. How does it look like in a Web3 setting using NFTs? How do you make promises but not um, over promise as well? So that's something that we learn, right? Community expectations has to be managed. So that, that's all. I mean, that's, that's really cool. And actually it, it ties really into what uh, we were all fortunate to meet up yesterday and talk a bit about this. But Jan, you had a really good point about this yesterday with how you know you guys have gone from the user acquisition side of step in to all the socialization of it all could you tell us a little bit more about that uh yeah of course um i think um let's say the past experience of building the web3 product i think the extra has to be come up and uh, we find that will be actually a very um uh, productive tool for using uh, for user onboarding but the key question is what Next, after you have, let's say, collect your first batch of user. Mm -hmm. And uh, from the experience we're running Stepin for the past two years is that uh, we found we have to do something on the social side. So that's where we started to build the, uh, the offline event. You know, we ran a lot of offline event last year. And uh, this year, we move a lot of event to the online. But uh, we're still running good offline event. And we are not satisfied with the, you know, just running the event. So the question becomes, can we incorporate um, social feature into the Web3 product? And uh, so that the energy, the value we created in the game can be one, amplified through social, and two, curated on social, and three is where we can um, um, uh, 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 extend to more user using the social impact because looking at Twitter, right? Um, there are so many people talking about the Web3, the cryptos on Twitter. The, the Twitter is actually the ultimate um, you know, uh, Web3 user onboarding tool. But imagine that we're building some sort of a social feature into the game. And that, that's what we are actually going to do next, is to incorporate social feature into Steppen by building uh, Steppen 2, and also building a social strategy game uh, called Gas Zero, which we're going to release toward the end of this year. I mean, that's super exciting. I think it's called X now, as opposed to Twitter. So we got to yeah, switch yeah, our yeah, jargon. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting because when you talk about the social interaction, 
And this, I think, is ties really way, uh, really well to what Kay, you've been working on with especially user-generated gaming content, and especially what it looks like in the future. And this is a talk about future of gaming. Like, given what we're hearing from Jan and Bailey, like, what, what are your thoughts on UGC, and especially as it relates to your company? Yeah, for sure. Hey, guys, my name is Kay, uh, the CEO at ZTX. Uh, maybe just a quick intro, we're the Web3 uh, initiative of Zepetto, which is the largest metaverse in Asia with more than 400 million uh, registered users. So um, when it comes to UGC, I mean, UGC content is the future of games. Uh, with democratization of tools and ease of use, there are more creators than ever before, including all of us here. We can all be creators. And with that, you know, we've seen in our Web2 business in Zepetto just the rise of digital fashion creators making up to six figures per year, if not more. And there are more than four million creators today um, who are uh, successfully uh, creating and selling their digital fashion items. More than three billion items have been transacted to date on the platform. So as this UGC-driven nature of our Web2 business grows, we at ZTX, uh, we want to cater to the new demands of creators who are looking to expand their audience um, by launching their NFT collections on an on-chain virtual world where they can better engage with their audiences and more robustly participate uh, in governance uh, and new economic opportunities. That's, I think, really, now, now that we've gotten everyone through and, and we've been able to talk a bit about sort of how our heads are currently, I think this is something that's come up over and over again. I knew it came up yesterday in our conversation, which is some of the philosophical underpinnings of the games we work with, that there's a lot of interoperability, that there's the ability for the community to interact. Bailey, like I know you've been at the forefront of this, especially with working with other partners. How, what are you seeing out there? Like, What are the games that are coming to you and also how you guys are able to add value to them? Yeah, I think maybe I'll touch on two points. So the first point is, of course, from the publishing side, we have been advising them in different ways to build the Web3 side of the game. How do they add Web3 incrementally into a game? Not every game needs a token, of course, but uh, starting from an NFT to build community, slowly progressing to a stage where you use tokens as a marketing budget to grow the game. So stuff like that is what we help with. And then um, another point is on XE. So XE Core is something recent that we've built. I think that's Eat your microphone. Yeah. We, we can hear Not, you. All right. Yeah, so Exit Core is something that we have uh, we've recently launched. I think it's about creating deeper and wider experiences for Exit holders. So by wider, I mean we have things like this thing called the Exit Experience Points. It's found in different games that we have partnered with. So users can actually go to this game, get this amount of experience points, go to that game, get some materials, eventually collecting these materials to craft and upgrade certain visual aspects of Exit, deepening the emotional connection you have with the asset. I think that's something that we are working towards. And then you can think of this as a way to drive our users through different games as well, economically. Because there's, of course, people that demand for certain materials collected in different games. So that's also a way we're actually codified to drive a certain amount of users to different games and have them actually try out, play test, and then eventually help those games succeed, right? So you're saying not only is it helping with the retention of your core games, but also drives user acquisition to the new games as well. Correct, correct. So that's the ecosystem we're trying to build. I think uh, where most of the games they come on, they see a lot of value being part of this ecosystem, and that's how we all win together. We attract the best games, the best games, we offer them the help they need, the support they need, of course, and also the economic incentives uh, through this new Exicore ecosystem. And, and Jan, I mean, you, you are working with launching a new game. Like, how, how do you feel about the interaction between Stepin and the new game? Um, so we did one thing is that uh, the new the new game called Gas Hero, right? And we created a Gas Hero badge in Stepen. So you have to burn like uh, you know ten thousand GST on the chain, and so that we call it Gas Hero, right? You burn gas, and then you get the get the badge, and then the badge will then uh, give you some uh, uh, early access, uh, some resources, you know. Uh, we start to airdrop to the the badge holder, so. I think we actually see this is a pretty effective tool because now once we down the ten thousand sorry the one thousand uh, batch holder, this one thousand batch holder gonna be the initial user for the new game, and uh, and uh, they will be the people that uh, you know posting on X uh, <laughs> about the game content, uh, what's going on you know so and then people follow them right so and go back is 
um, it's all about social signal, right? So people see, oh, this is a cool thing, and I want to get access, and then I got stopped because you need an activation code system, you need to have some sort of uh, uh, resources to get started, and people just say, oh, I want to compete, you know, for that white list, right? So I think that's the reason the NFT got really, really hot in the beginning is that you can just not get the NFT. You have to wait for it, like, almost like a, you know, Hermes bag, you know, the, 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 the Rolex watches. It's an urge of FOMO and an urge of um, you know, trying new things. So that's also very important is that uh, we cannot just build same thing all over again, right? We need to try new things, exciting things, things that people haven't seen before. And that, that's the reason that I say, oh, I want to try it. You know, this is something I, I haven't experienced, but look pretty fun, right, from this person. So we do this like one, two, three steps, right? So one is that um, we onboard a small portion of user, and two is that uh, this most small portion of user will get some fun time in the, in the app, and they will, they will talk about it, right? And then they'll talk about it on the socials. And, uh, and then we're gonna spread it through socials, right? So we can have like a referral code. You know, that's the first thing we've done with uh, Stepen. You cannot just go to Stepen. You need to get somebody that already plays Stepen to give you a code. And then people say, oh, where's the code, where's the code? So, and uh, the people see it and say, oh, what's going on here, right? So th this code seems to be pretty valuable, right? I, want, I also want code, right? So this is, you know, when, when you're doing the, uh, uh, what's a group sync, right? This is called, uh, I want it, everybody want it, and I might just also want it. So. Um, using social, using new things um, to onboard product from A to B and B to C, C to D, I think uh, would be a pretty effective way uh, uh, going forward. I mean, that's, that's really insightful. And, and you know, Kay, like we were talking, if, if you don't, if, if y'all don't know, and apologies for the y'all, Texas, uh, if y'all don't know, Zepedo has 400 million users. It's like the, one of the biggest metaverse sold companies by users in the world, and like your ability, especially as ETX, to leverage the type of relationship there, how are you feeling about that next movement, be it for onboarding people who are not only creators, but also consumers of the UGC content? Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, it's a very long-term sort of, uh, you know, agenda that we have in migrating our Web2 users into Web3 successfully. Um, and we need to kind of do this in a very careful approach because our Web2 users are new to crypto. And oftentimes they're Gen Z female uh, users uh, who may never have purchased an NFT before. Um, so what we need to do at ZTX is to educate uh, our users in the Web2 world, but also partner with key projects in Web3. Um, and so just as an example, um, you know, we partnered with Geek Gods, one of the top NFT communities out there, where we provided a token gate experience to their collectors, where their collectors got to claim a Geek Gods hoodie, virtual hoodie, uh, through our avatar builder uh, feature. So I think, you know, we were just talking about partnerships here. It's really important for us to all build together collectively and grow the pie, so to speak, as opposed to having our own go-to-market and just focusing on, on our own projects, uh, user growth. Um, so, yeah, education, partnership, very important. I think one last thing I, I would love to kind of share with you guys is just about two weeks ago, uh, we ran a small secret pilot project uh, for our web users of Zepetto, uh, where we uh, basically had this campaign for them to claim a ZTX virtual hoodie. Um, now, they did not know that this was an NFT. Uh, but we made this very seamless and easy for them to claim uh, and partnering with a uh, smart account uh, uh, wallet provider called Obi, where there was a blockchain uh, wallet that was created on the back end, the user did not know. And at the end of the day, it was a cross platform between Zepetto and ZTX um, campaign that we were success successfully um, able to run. And this resulted in 200,000 uh, new users or unique wallets created. So. Um, yeah, I would love to kind of share more maybe after this panel too, if you guys have any questions about that. Uh, but uh, yeah, just looking forward to more of these pilot projects that we run. Yeah, and, and that's the thing that's so cool when we think about new technology at the intersection of gaming. I think that's something that y'all are really good at and it, it shows in part because unlike some of the other ecosystems we've seen historically, it is a rising tide lifting all boats here and it's really acquiring users and I think I was going to say, Bailey, like one of the things that I love about what you guys have done with the Ronin chain is encouraging that behavior, right? And being able to bring people into that. 
Could you tell us a little bit more about like how that's evolving in your, how you've looked at the world the last three to six months and what it looks like for you now? Yeah, so it's a big topic. I think um, maybe we start from the start, right? So axi breeding is really like a sort of a referral system. You breed certain axes and then your new player coming in has to own a certain set of axes to participate in the game. So there's sort of a referral loop in that. And then that helps to bring in more users like what um, Jan has said is about creating the FOMO, the group thing, everyone wants to own an Axi, and then that potentially helped the, uh, the, the rise of Axi, right? And then in more, more recent terms, I think for Ronin, um, I've been thinking about how do we, let's say, keep the, uh, a lot of user data? How do we put some of that um, user preferences actually on chain? So things like badges um, that, that actually talk about um, your preferences for playing a certain type of game, the assets that you own, they all point to some sort of uh, preference of the user, right, to play a certain genre of games. So that is something that we're increasingly, increasingly encouraging. We call it trying to build your on-chain reputation. So in, in such a setting uh, where, the wallet date, wallet, where the wallet owns more and more rich um, assets and metadata, I think that's where things get more interesting in terms of a user acquisition from a game developer standpoint. So game developers now, if imagine you're building a, let's say you're building a mobile game, you want to find the users with high affinity for, to try a game, to play test it, to give you feedback, and perfect that loop that you want to go to market with. That's where things get more interesting, right? Because now you have a way to see, okay, these are the list of wallets that you want to involve in your airdrop campaign. You want to onboard them and also convert them into your community. I think that's, um, that's the ecosystem that we want to encourage, where applications, games, anyone looking to market products can find their high affinity users. I and mean, that's so cool, like, especially after the ATT changes with Apple's privacy yeah. work. Like, that exactly. is so valuable. Correct. Yeah, so Web3, I think, offers us a, a new method to try and solve this, uh, and privacy and ATT, trying to cut um, the game developers' understanding of their users. So, yeah, I think it's a, a, a new um, method that a lot of game developers are increasingly aware of, and they want to experiment with the NFTs, direct relationships with the wallet uh, owners. Yeah, and it's... I think especially when we see the cutting edge of things, especially in my role at Bitcraft and with Infinite Canvas, we're seeing a lot of work right now with integration of AI. And I don't think it's possible in 2023 to have a conversation about the future of anything, but specifically of gaming without AI. Jan, you had a great story yesterday that I would love for you to share with the audience about your guys' integration and how it's really changing how you're viewing the user base. Yeah, so uh, we now have two AI products. Uh, one is integrated in Stepan. Uh, we actually just released the uh, newer version of the Smack, which is the anti-cheating mechanic we had. Um, I think this is go back to where the Bitcoin started, where um, the mining has to be verified right, by the peers. And uh, with you know, Stepan, where you move outside, you get verified by the AI. Right, so see, are you cheating, right? So because there are so many ways that you can, um, let's say if you use a Strava, you'll be able to trick Strava, thinking you're actually running, but you're just shaking your mobile on your <laughs> bike, right? So we spent well past year and a half just to build the AI, right? So to make sure that the verification process is in fact um, uh, in, in, impervable or impenetrable with, with the cheatings. That's one thing that we did. And uh, the second thing we did, which is now more on the consumer end, is where we have a GNT uh, called the Generative NFT Tools. And uh, so the GNT is, in, is embedded into the NFT uh, marketplace we had, which is called More. Um, and uh, people can create NFTs uh, with text to prompt, right? So we basically say, I want to create, uh, so we have different versions, right? So the latest version, you can create your own face. So you upload um, 15 or 10 of your selfie, and then you can turn yourself into an NFT or an NFT collection. Um, and uh, other ways people can use it is to create derivative art. So we have template where people can create like, derivative art for uh, a board ape, you know, mutant ape, uh, clone eggs. Uh, we have a few that uh, launch through our platform They can create derivative art. So, those are also um, uh, uh, like a tools for um, bring user activities for this NFTs uh, community, right? So I can't own a board ape, I just have a you know, derivative, I can also get involved in the conversation. 
So that's another way of uh, um, uh, AI. And the third way of using AI is where we having a follow-up function for the GNT called Fairmint. So this, this is basically you can mint not just one NFT, you can mint up to 300 to 1,000 NFTs, also AI, right? So you basically generate your anchor NFT. So okay, I have generated 10 NFT I'm satisfied with. And then I will elaborate, we'll get AI to elaborate, turn this 10 NFT into 1,000 NFTs. And also you can write the metadata as well. So this give our creator a tremendous amount of uh, uh, tools, basically to turn themselves from step in user to an NFT creator. So we have about three, 300 to 400 step in user now become uh, NFT creators, and then they provide utility for their NFTs. So that's, I think, um, two things, right? We're building for the AIs. Yeah, I mean, you know, for, for me personally at Infinite Canvas, like our belief that creators and consumers become one for one is something that I think we all of us agree on. And, and Kay, especially given that UGC is the future and we see already with what Jan is saying as well as just the ecosystem writ large and how people are able to create content so much easier, it must be a boon for you guys, right? Like, how are you guys thinking about this implementation? Yeah, I think, you know, as ETX, our vision is to empower creators and the communities to thrive uh, by building an on-chain virtual world that's immersive, uh, where, you know, creators can engage with their communities in new innovative ways. And so I think AI implementation, if you're a creator yourself, whether you're in Web 2 or Web 3, definitely something that you've been studying, uh, and I'm sure. And I think, um, you know, having partnered and will be partnering with a lot of these uh, top NFT projects, this is something that is constantly in our conversations. Um, and I know some artists may not be pro AI. Uh, they want their work to be pure, you know, manual, um, based on their sort of uh, own uh, skills. And there are some artists who are fast to adapt um, uh, to this implementation of AI. And so I think we're seeing a very interesting sort of, um, you know, dynamic uh, sort of reception here. And again, us as a platform where we're really uh, uh, providing an infrastructure layer for NFTs, avatars, and digital identity, for us, all we can do is just support our creators and what, you know, uh, so they can do whatever they, they want to do. Bailey? Yeah, I think, I think regarding the topic of AI, probably I'm not the best person to answer it. I think internally we have been researching ways we can apply AI to let's say how to interact better with your axes, how do you apply some kind of personality to the axes, for example, so deepening the emotional bond, right, which I spoke about. Um, but right now, I think we don't have anything much to share. We don't want to overpromise anything. Yeah, I mean, I think that's so intuitive and, and honestly speaks loudly about how y'all and Sky Mavis think about these ecosystems. You guys are so careful to make right. sure of these things. Yeah. So, so community is definitely the first thing. Um, it's the only thing that we really own, I think. Um, the relationship with them is what we prioritize, right? Like safety, we've purposely chosen to make Ronin a more curated experience. We don't let anyone just deploy, whether that be like scams or low quality applications. It goes through a very stringent selection process as well. So I think that community aspect is always something that we, we prioritize and put first, right? Security it being one of it, I think we have done, we have made a lot of learnings over the years as well. And, and that's great. And one of the things that we can't fit into a 30-minute panel, and you know, certainly we can't fit into a 10-hour panel even, it's just all different parts of this. And so one of the things I always recommend is these are some of the world experts when it comes to these intersections right now. They are seeing the things that are happening before it's even talked about in the press. And so in that sense, Bailey, like, what's the best way to reach you? Yeah, so I think you can find me on x.com. I think that's what it's called nowadays. I'm, I'm that, on I'm That's on what we've been told. Yeah. That, that so, got a memo from the back. Yeah, bottom dog. I think that's my handle, dog with a zero. Um, and then also, on the, if you are, if guys are interested to work together on a partnership basis, um, definitely go to roninchain.com. There's also a apply to deploy with us um, button that you can access. Same question for you, okay. Yeah, so uh, ZTX official on, t on X, please follow us. So I regularly participate in various Twitter spaces with the rest of our team. Uh, we recently did our Genesis Home Mint on OpenSea. I had just 
uh, the reveal celebration, I think, 5 a.m. KST this morning. Uh, so yeah, just uh, continue to follow us. We have a lot of exciting updates there. I'm based in Seoul, Korea, actually. So if you're based in Korea and want to uh, you know, meet up, uh, have various questions, just reach out. Last but not least, Jan? Yes. Um, yeah, people can reach me on X and uh, you know, follow Stepan, you know, more, Gas Hero, Door. So those are the product we built. And uh, yeah, also don't forget to attend our um, um, uh, offline event uh, here in Korea. We have some running event and barbecue and AMA raffles. That's on the ninth. Well, on the ninth. Yeah. Where? Um, uh, at uh, Ichin. It's uh, near the airport. We oh, have nice. uh, like a we run a park where we can have the barbecues. Nice. <laughs> you got anything else for us? No, that's all. Oh, it sounds great. great. Well, thank you all where, for coming. Where yeah. can people find you? Oh, well, appreciate you. Yes, you can find me on, on Twitter. I'm just going yeah. to be a rebel for a second. Oh, you can find me on Next. I'm at Seth Park. You can also find me on LinkedIn, Sebastian Park. So uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. If you have any questions about gaming, these are the people to talk to. And thank you so much for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, please give a big round of applause. To all these